The Podcasting Dead is available on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Make sure to subscribe for more podcasts. And while you're at it, drop us a like. If you want to help support the channel and have access to extra content, secret contest, and more, make sure to search for us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Podcasting Dead. Happy Weird Wednesday to you. My name's Justin. Yeah, I'm JP. And we're the Podcasting Dead, here to podcast about dead things. No, but we uh, we podcast about a lot of different stuff. If you're a fan of podcasts in general, please be sure to check out our channel. And do us a favor and click that like button. If nothing else, it's a small little effort that helps us out a ton. So, uh, normally... You know, what we typically do is we'll present something to you, like a conspiracy theory or, or a paranormal phenomenon, and then we'll discuss it. But now we're just going to discuss, once again, something we've talked about before without really any presentation. And we're talking about, uh, of course, a simulation theory because uh, it fascinates me. I'm pretty sure it fascinates JP. Oh, for sure. And uh, it's just something uh, worth discussing. And uh, actually, had a couple of listeners tell me that they're one of their favorite uh, conspiracy theories out there is the simulation theory. I mean, it's got so much traction. Elon Musk supports it. So yeah, he says we live in a simulation of some kind on some level, like pretty much beyond a shadow of a doubt. Um, so my question would be, like, what what kind of simulation are we in? So like, are we AI? Like if you were to play Grand Theft Auto, are we just the people walking down the street? Um, some say that that's the case. And what this is, is our future selves are running simulations. Uh, Cause don't forget the simulation doesn't just mean in the sense of like, you know, like the matrix, because People, scientists run simulations all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, remember that show Ultimate Warrior where they ran simulations to see, you know, who would win in the fight, uh, the, you know, the American Navy SEALs or the Russian Spitznaz. They would put in all this information and it would run a bunch of simulations. Uh, And some, a recent one that I've heard, one theory is that we in the future are trying to solve the problem of uh, global warming. So what we've done is we are running a simulation or running simulations to see what we did in the past. Hmm. You know what I mean? A, yeah, yeah. I hadn't heard of uh, heard of looking that. at where the issue might be most important. Looking at you know what we did in the past, um, and then you know some theories are that we're a simulation to just view how our past selves lived. You know us thousands or millions of years in the future are mm-hmm. running these simulations just to see what life would have been like back in these times. Um, and there's just so many little clues that point to it. I mean, they actually have shown that DNA sequencing and like coding are very, you know, similar. I actually think they, what did they, they used coding or, you know, wrote code for part of a, and I might be wrong on this, but it, it was something to this effect, like for a, a rat's brain or something like that, mm-hmm. you know, um, and it wasn't necessarily like they, they created artificial life with this mouse, but they were able to like replicate the process of, of DNA with coding. So, I mean, even uh, Neil, Neil deGrasse, I always, is it Neil Tyson deGrasse or Neil deGrasse Tyson? I know, uh, I know the, uh, the deGrasse or however you say it is the middle name. Okay. Neil deGrasse Tyson yeah. deGrasse. Uh, even he gives, you know, some credence to the simulation theory. So JP, what do you think? I mean, what, what what do you think is most likely if you had to pick one? I mean, what, just what are your thoughts on it in general? I mean, I, I could definitely see like a, the planet being uninhabitable and basically just, yeah, I, I guess it is kind of like the, the Matrix movies, just instead of living in like a subterranean cave city, you know, they just plug in and let you live in this nice little sunshiny world. So you think maybe it's like alien? Maybe we're all just colonized uh, on, well, In a sense, we're all living on this like giant spaceship floating through space and we're all in pods. And this is just a virtual simulation they've put us in because there we have no home. Yeah, I I could definitely see the the Earth just totally uninhabitable. So, hey, instead of living in hell, let's, you know, just plug them up and and let them ride. Um, What do you think about like simulations, like running simulations or or video game? Are we part of a video game? I mean, there's so many different theories on what kind of simulation that we could be living in. I mean, yeah, I mean, it it makes you wonder, man. I I was saying yesterday on the Patreon cast, it's um, 
like just switching jobs, going from one grocery store to just like a different location, man. It's almost like I'm encountering the same people, just slightly tweaked versions. And I know at the end of the day, you know, I mean, everybody's a lot alike in a lot of ways, but it, just, it really does make me think, man, it is too. There's like this uh, old couple that come in and man, they worked at the first grocery store I worked at across town, like 12, 13 years ago. And I just, out of the blue, I see them in the one I just started working at a few months ago. And it, it's like they haven't aged at all. They're just still these this old couple with their middle-aged son that just walked through the store. And I, the only reason I recognized them and knew that was them for sure is their big, like, ogreish middle-aged son has a Bart Simpson tattoo on his forearm. Because I was like, there's no way these people are still alive or at the very least still looking this good for, for old-ass people. And it's like, that motherfucker's got the... Got the Bart Simpson tattoo. It's yeah. him. That is, huh. It, it's, it's, it's like every, you know, people have a lot of similarities, but they stand out to you yeah. as being the same. They're kind of filling those same roles in a different environment, you know? So it, uh, yeah, Mike, all right. I'm not to get perverted or, or, no, or weird there, here. Uh, <laughs> JP's like, now this is my territory. Yeah, let's roll. But all right. So, <laughs> like pods, all right, like the Matrix. Like, let's say we're all hooked up to these machines or whatever. When we do things and experience things, is it just tricking our brain into thinking we feel these sensations? Like, uh, again, not to be gross, but I mean, I'm just going to ask the questions that some think and don't want to ask, I guess. But, like, when you make whoopee, mm-hmm. do you just, like, all in your pants in the pod? Or is it just making your brain tricking your brain into thinking it feels that sensation when in fact it doesn't. Well, you, when you think about it, it's kind of the same as having a wet dream, you know, and a lot of times your what's going on in your mind does trigger a physical response. So right now I could just be in a pod with a, like electrodes hooked up to my brain with just jizz soaked pants. I don't know, man. It also makes you wonder if like your, your catheter, catheter, you, you have a catheter and you, I forget how to say catheterized, catheterized. That would make more sense. Yeah. Because so you can't just a... sit there and pee your pants. I mean, like yeah. imagine if it, if it was like, you're just sitting there having constant wet dreams then. And, and like when they finally wake you from your pot and you get up, your pant legs are stiff and just shatter yeah. like ice. God, man, but that's, ooh, that's a scary thought. Just getting hard with that, that catheter up your dick, man. Oh, yeah. But I mean, who's to say that in the future we even have sex? You know, I mean, like um, aliens, for example, extraterrestrials, you know, a lot of times they're described as not really showing a gender. Mm-hmm. They don't have any significant, you know, any organs that signify male, female, whatever. And some thoughts are just that they're so advanced, they don't have a need for sex. So they've evolved away from uh, having sex and basically just create, you know, just create new life in test tubes or however it is they do it. And I mean, who's to say that if we are a simulation and we're actually in the future that we don't even have genitalia. All of this is just being transmitted into our brain to feel these things. Because, I mean, it's like, okay, if we're in a simulation, though, I I wonder, like, what happens when you die? So Mm -hmm. if I go jump in a lake right now and I drown, how does it – I mean, I don't know. It just – and it really – that's a loaded question because it just depends on what type of simulation you'd be in, I guess. Like, if we're a video game, nothing happens. You're just a character and you – you you know, you re- I guess you respawn, which could explain – because, I mean, you think about it, man. The simulation theory could be used to explain so many different phenomena. I mean, like uh, past lives. Mm-hmm. It could be code left over from that past life. Like your character dies and not to be too gamey here, but in a sense you respawn later or they reuse your character or at least part of your character for something else. And maybe there's some leftover coding in there from before. And that's why you remember these past lives that you've lived. You know, I mean, I don't really know how gaming game programming works but i imagine they create an avatar and there's coding in that avatar and perhaps they just kind of reshape your avatar to reuse it later and you're stuck with code or information left over from past lives yeah but kind of like a westworld sort of deal only instead of androids we're you know just right yeah yeah like dolores like you're starting to remember all these things you know that was supposed to have been wiped um that could also explain ghosts Mm mm-hmm I mean, think about it. It's it's just leftover coding that's still running the same as it would. I mean, a lot of times, let's. I mean, you definitely do have ghosts and and paranormal entities that they, people claim to mess with them. But let's look at some of the earliest ghost tales and ghost tales that persist today. All have 
something in common, and that's that this dead person is always seen doing the same thing mm-hmm. that they did in real. You know, yeah. it, they're seen walking down the same stairwell. I mean, there's so many cases where ghosts don't even seem like they try to interact with people. They're just following, and we at once on another uh, weird Wednesday discussed perhaps like residual energy being yeah. the cause for that. But what if it's just like residual coding? Like what if the reason why people for hundreds of years have seen this one maiden walk down these steps and through the wall could just be like leftover traces of coding that wasn't completely taken out. And it's just kind of following, you know, the same path it would have. Yeah, it, it does make you think it, it the same thing with like deja vu, you know, that's a good so point. Yeah, just, yeah. I mean, how, who's not to say, I mean, Deja vu, another excellent point. Let's think about what I was just talking about with like the Ultimate Warrior. That mm-hmm. it's an old TV show. If you've never seen it, well, and I say old, I don't mean like ancient, but it's like ten years ago. It's a great show though, man. I used to sit and watch hours of that. Well, very fascinating. But they would run simulations to see who would win in this fight. They would, and, and I know the simulations aren't weren't probably as complex as as our life is, but uh, that's a primitive simulation. But I mean, you got to think in it. Uh, advanced civilization would have far more advanced simulations but you know what they would do is run hundreds of simulations to see like who would win like i mean they would take ancient figures in history like uh uh i was about to say gandhi i don't think they would have had gandhi fighting uh, <laughs> no, but like, like genghis khan genghis and, khan and, and attila the hun yeah you know or genghis khan and william wallace and they would put in all the and they would run simulations of yeah. them fighting hundreds of them to see who who won more times than not so, I mean, like you said, deja vu. Who's not to say you haven't already done this before, and now it's another simulation that's being run. Yeah, life flashes before your eyes before you die. Perhaps that's got something to do with it, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's in a way, it's kind of a comforting thought. Not really, but... I, feel, I, I, swear, on my, I swear on everything that I know in love, I was just sitting here thinking that. Yeah. Just sitting here thinking that in some weird way, that kind of comforts me in the way that like an afterlife or religion mm-hmm. would. It's like... You know, while some might take that to be terrifying, I'm like, well, cool, I can just be rebooted. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Or, well, I mean, in in a way, I mean, even if it's not simulation theory, as uh, as we're talking about, like like digital, uh, I mean, they say that our brain is basically simulating our surroundings. It just takes in input and converts it into a, a form we can we can understand more or less. Well, and as we talked about on our Patreon cast yesterday, too, I mean, some theories suggest that none of this is even real. It's all mm-hmm. just generated from our conscious, you know, our yeah. brain is just creating this this existence and that none of it's actually real. Just swimming in a, a soup of atoms and stuff. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it's just being, you know, so um, I, I do, it is, it is I, the more and more I look into simulation theory, the more and more fascinating I find it. Uh, just just the explanations that it offers oh, yeah. for all of these unknown variables of our existence, simulation theory. And I'm not saying there aren't some holes in the theory. There will always be. But, I mean, there are lots of uncertainties in life. Again, things like ghosts and, you know, all of these phenomena that just can't be – people disappearing without a trace. Yeah. And now I know more often than not – there, you know, they'll be found thirty years later. Their bones were dumped mm-hmm. under a house being built. So I know that accounts for the majority of cases. But there are instances where someone is just ripped out of reality. It yeah. seems, and of course, uh, some might point to uh, extraterrestrials. But what if they were just erased from the simulation? Yeah, I mean, think about like Amelia Earhart or uh, what was that flight seven fifty? It, it was the Malaysia flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and it's it, well, it, it's like uh, I'm, I, I've like I'm really into the missing four one one thing, you mm-hmm. know, you know. I've, I, and I mean, sometimes those people are found, but there are instances where these people are like walking behind someone, very horror movie ish, like uh-huh. they're walking behind someone, and then that person might turn around and say something to them, look forward, and then when they say something else and that person doesn't respond, they look and they're gone. Like one instance, there was a guy hiking and um, you know, they're hiking and they're going through the woods and they're having conversation. I mean, it's just like when you and I went hiking, you know, just, just walking together through the woods, having conversation and then no yell, no rustle, no nothing. This guy turns around, his buddy's gone, just gone. And they end up finding some of his stuff down the road. Like, Uh Like it almost looks like he's been flipped upside down. The way they described it is almost like an eagle swooped down and grabbed him and took yeah. him off. But I mean, who's not to say that they're not? You know, if we are a simulation and if we are a simulation with a particular goal in mind, 
you know, trying to simulate a certain event or trying to simulate, you know, whatever. I mean, who's not to say that this this person, being that we are an advanced AI to some degree, unless everything we say is programmed in, which, you know, I like to think we're at least artificial intelligence. I mean, who's not to say that they're kind of going rogue or they're influencing it in a way uh, they're becoming a variable that is throwing off the simulation. So they have to pull them out mm-hmm. in order to keep things on track. Hey, I don't know. It's just it's fun to ponder. Don't it is, man. Don't it, it, it for 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 a second think that we're sitting here claiming we have the answers or that you know that we think we're science. I mean, no. It's just that's the point of a podcast is you discuss things, and uh, I love discussing this. Yeah, man. It's a it's a fun topic for sure, man. Nice little way to fill out a weird Wednesday when we were kind of you know like oh boy, what's going on today? Well, and you know it kind of threw me off because last night as I was right right before bed, I saw these videos from New Jersey of these mm-hmm. UFOs and. My God, it looked like a f- like the most real. I'm like, holy crap! There, this is not CGI. Yeah, they caught an actual UFO. I mean, there's no explaining this. But then, lo and behold, I wake up this morning, and the first thing I see is that there's a very easy way to explain it. It was just a side view of the Goodyear blimp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll do it sometimes. And I mean, I'm sure somebody out there is like, that's what they want you to think. But I mean, like when you know that, and you go back and you look at it, you're like, oh yeah, that's the Goodyear blimp. Hey man, maybe the uh, extraterrestrials are getting some ad dollars for repping Goodyear. It could be. But like once I saw that, I was like, well, crap. So I'm telling JP, like, all right, I went to bed thinking (laughs) I knew what we were going to talk about today and and now we can't unless, and that's one thing too, man. I mean, we could have just as easily like launched a podcast today talking about how no, it was a UFO. (laughs) But like, I mean, I don't want to, I know it was the Goodyear blimp. So I don't want to, you know, just try and get clickbaity. Like just, you know, we want to have general like organic discussion. So, yeah. But then I was like, hey, we kind of talked about simulation theory on the Patreon and it's a fun topic. It is, man. What type of simulation would you like to be in? Because if this is a video game, this has got to be one of the worst selling video games of all time. Yeah, I would. Uh, I've always said, man, it's uh, it's based off an episode of Star Trek: The Next Ge- Next Generation, The Inner Light. Like Captain Picard, a, a space probe attacks his mind, and he wakes up on this alien planet and spends you know a lot of time trying to figure out where the Enterprise is, how to get off, and uh, basically lives an entire lifetime on this planet. And when he's an old man ready to die, you know they reveal that the space probe basically contains the collective knowledge of their entire civilization that's gone now. And they is basically just a way to keep the memory of their, their people alive in him. And he wakes up back on the enterprise minutes later, you know, when he's lived an entire life. And I always thought that'd be cool, man, to just. So kind of like Roy on uh, Rick and Morty. Yeah. Remember yeah, Roy and like Splits that, yeah. and shits or however you say it, where, you know, you live an entire lifetime and yeah. Oh, um, that'd be cool, man, to just die and wake up on the bridge of like a starship and just be like, oh, shit, that was that was weird. I mean, it, it, but see, now here's here's my question. Let's go beyond the simulation. So what about the existence of those running the simulation? I mean, why are they not? in? you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. We're, we're sitting here. We exist. We, we've seen signs of evolution. And maybe that's the video game. Maybe the video game that we're in is called evolution. You know, mm-hmm. who knows? You have to guide a species towards uh, intergalactic travel or, you know, ultimate intelligence or something. I mean, who knows what people would be into in the distant future. But uh, but if so, so do people in the real world, like if assuming this is all a simulation, do they question the nature of their reality? Because as far as we know it to mankind, everybody questions the nature of their reality, even diehard religious people just being religious you're maybe not questioning it, but you're you're interested in, you know, the why we're here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, so everybody to some extent is is pondering, like, you know, how do we get here? What's the point? And all of these questions. And is any of this real? And I mean, do you think they go through those things as well? Yeah, I'm sure everyone has those thoughts, even, you know, if we do have like caretakers or whatever outside of whatever we're stuck in. So I wonder you would if. Think. I wonder if the real world is, is is more simplistic then, because we look at all of these complex things that create our our environment, you know, and are like we can't explain dark matter and we mm-hmm. can't explain all of these things. Like we know this happens, but we don't know why. And you know, a, a simulation theory and and the fact that DNA and and code kind of you know DNA can almost be replicated with code. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, like, what is their world like? Is their world a little simpler, you know, with no unknown variables whatsoever if they're not in a simulation, but they are, in fact, the real reality and we're just in a created one? You know what I'm saying? Like, kind of. Yeah, man. It makes you wonder. Breaking out of the membrane here and going out into their world. Like, what is what is it like? Yeah, it, it definitely makes you wonder, man. Or is their world uh, anything? Maybe they're just a bunch of gaseous beings floating around that create a simulation to feel things and to, yeah. you know, to interact with it. You know, I, absolutely. I mean, we could have evolved to a point to where we're just like, man, this sucks. You know, let's get back to a, a simpler way of living, and that's the whole point of the the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe. <sighs> It's just I love it, man. I just love pondering it. So I mean, like, what if, what if Earth was destroyed? Like, what if the planet was destroyed, and we realize that there is no way we're going to get the bulk of humanity on spaceships without them ripping it apart? Uh-huh. You know, I mean, we can't even live harmonious on Earth. There's no way we could live on spaceships. So they put us all, be it uh, maybe even against our will, into this simulation to feel as though we are living and everything, but it's just. Maybe while we journey for another habitable planet or while we're just drifting in an intergalactic convoy as a means to survive. I could see it, man. And I mean, think about it. All right. When people die, imagine this. So, you know, when you've been sleeping, I mean, I, I feel like most people have been through this. You're sleeping and maybe you've got a window beside your bed or someone jerks open the curtains. When you open your eyes, what happens? You get flooded with this bright white light. Yeah. You know, and you're like, oh, God. What if when people die, that's it, that they're waking up from the simulation and that's the white light they see. And Mm -hmm. that's the conversation they have with, you know, what we would consider God being just their programmer or or whoever's in charge of monitoring them, you know, whatever. And then you're put back into the simulation like we were just talking about. And that's kind of, you know, it definitely makes you wonder, man. It definitely makes you wonder. I feel like I feel like it would it would it would. You know, it would it would explain a lot because yeah. I mean, a lot of other like religions. You know, you're you're just basically going off of faith. We had our our good pal and dear friend, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Mister Julius, on with us a couple of weeks back discussing God and ghosts, which was a great podcast. It kind of turned into Julius, you know, preaching to us, which is understandable. He's somewhat of a preacher himself, but uh, I thought it was a great podcast. If you haven't listened to it, go go find it. It's great. Uh, well, you can find it on YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes or SoundCloud, you know, those this space is limited, so it's probably been kicked. But you can go to YouTube and actually check that out. Great discussion. Um, but, you know, we were t- at, towards the end, he was kind of insinuating that the reason why Christianity was the one true religion was uh-huh. because no other religion was backed by facts or something right. to that effect. To yeah, which it's ju- the only, only religion you can prove. And JP, of course, was, was right on it and was like, well, you know, no, you 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 can't prove it. You're saying you believe it, right? You know, like Jesus. He's like, well, no, but Jesus there evidence were- supports that Jesus, you know, ascended to heaven after three days. And you're like, well, there's no like, I mean, there's no record of it in the sense of there's no video, there's no photograph, there's no, you know, thousands of accounts. You know, right. I mean, if you were good to go through and find like thousands of, of journals and diaries all describing the same thing. That would be what something I would consider leaning more towards mm-hmm. proof. But, you know, and that's none of this is to dispel Christianity. But what I'm getting at is that it's a faith based thing. Yeah. You know, and it's just it kind of like this. You just you, you at the end of the day, all it all is, whether you believe in simulation theory, or you believe in religions, it's all just looking for answers. Yeah, It's all a big crapshoot, man, which I, I think that we are. Uh, be able to get more evidence uh, supporting simulation than, you know, like Jesus, because that was 2,000 years ago. But Maybe 2020 is just a virus in the system. It could be, man. You know, I mean, it's like the coronavirus is actually just code for like a virus yeah. that's been uploaded. Um, but I don't know. So if, if I was to tell you, let's just say I was this to you otherworldly being. And I was to say, JP, you're in a simulation. Do you want to know what kind of simulation you're in? What would you hope would be the simulation that you're in? Would you rather be in a video game? Would you rather be in an actual like simulation? Like we're running simulations to get answers on this. Would you rather find out that you're a physical being that's in a pod and, you know, I'd like to have a physical form, uh, you know, and uh, maybe when they plug me back in, I get to sort of change some circumstances in my, uh, my reality, but. 
I mean, consider like, uh, and, and it's funny because whenever you, sometimes people will scoff at you when you mention science fiction in the name of, uh, 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 of, of science. I don't know how I want to word that, but you know, when you bring up science fiction, when you're talking about things like this, some people will kind of scoff at you, but you're like, dude, life imitates art. How many things did science fiction bring up that later were done in real life, you know, whether it was inspired by the science fiction or not. I mean, you know, life imitates art sometimes. And, you know, we're actually finding now that a lot of scientists are saying the thought of being able to upload your consciousness into a computer is not that far fetched. Oh, yeah, man. I can see it happening in the, in the next like 50 years, maybe sooner than that, man, maybe like 20 years. Shit. And so why I get to sci fi are things like Westworld uh -huh. and things like Black Mirror. Now, slight spoilers for both, but I mean, both have been out now for years. So, you know, sorry, but not sorry. But there's an entire episode of Black Mirror where I mean, well, you got several simulation episodes of Black Mirror. But I mean, there's one in particular where like when you die, you have the choice to either just die Mm -hmm. Or you can have your consciousness uploaded to heaven, more or less, you know. And if you die real suddenly, once you're dead, you're done. You know, yeah. they have to do the upload while you're alive. But um, you have a choice, you know. Do you want to die or do you just want to upload your consciousness and keep living in a, in, a, in, a, in a very realistic simulation to which people have sex and have relationships and life goes on, you know, but it's just all simulated. And then remember in Westworld. Again, big spoilers for season two here. So you might want to skip if you had big, big spoilers in three, two, one. But, you know, at the end of season two, they take all of that AI and basically they ditch their robot bodies and their consciousnesses are uploaded into this kind of virtual heaven that's yeah. on a server that's been hidden. But they're all in like robot heaven, more or less. And I mean, who's not to say if our consciousness can't be uploaded much in the way that like an AI is good, that it couldn't be put into a simulation. I mean, what if we're all dead right now? Like what if our physical bodies are, you know, somewhere mm -hmm. in a pod because we all signed up to just relive life in simulations, you know, maybe the, the whole allure of it is that you get to live infinite lives and you get to do it different each time and you start mm -hmm. fresh. And, you know? Yeah. It makes you wonder, man, it, it could be done, you know, kind of for, uh, humanitarian reasons just to keep some semblance of a humanity alive after the whole race went extinct, you know, but who knows? I mean, what if like, what if there's like one person, one or two people, let's just say one hell, let's do this. Let's make it, this would be a good story. What if it's one person that created the simulation and they're hooked up to a machine? What if they're like the last human in existence and they created the simulation for companionship? Like, you know, maybe yeah. they, Maybe the Earth in the future just gets destroyed, be it global warming, an asteroid, alien, and whatever. But like this one person is all that's left, or the, you know, and then they've created this simulation that they put themselves in and created all of us um, so that they have some semblance of normalcy. Yeah, it, it would make sense. That's kind of kind of one of the scarier, you know, uh, aspects of it, but. Hey. Which would mean, like, which one of us is the real person? <laughs> Do they know they're the real yeah, person? Yeah, or either, yeah. Ooh. I mean, it's like you've got so many instances, and, it, and granted, if people are telling the truth, but so many interesting accounts of glitches in the Matrix. Like, I remember this story, um, I think I heard it on Lazy Masquerade's channel, which, again, if you've never checked his channel out, man, that guy has one of the most soothing, addictive voices mm. ever. I like to just go to sleep <laughs> and work out listening to him tell stories. But uh, much like Mr. Ballin, Mr. Ballin is another great YouTube channel that you should check out. If you like The Strange, he, he, he gives it in story form and does a fantastic job. All I ask is if you check out those channels, just say, hey, the podcasting dead brought us yeah, here. There you go. But, um, you know, Lazy Masquerade read an account from Reddit saying that this guy, like, like drove the same path every day all you know and like one day this right that he takes was on the left yeah and he's like what you know like what they like it's not like i'm sleep deprived i'm going crazy because a lot of times and i mean we are like we you and i even though we're sitting here talking about simulation theory we're pretty logical people if we hear a bump we don't assume ghosts we're like right. oh man something must have failed or you know wood shrinking and swelling or you know whatever but i mean like a lot of times, too, it's discounted as, oh, he was probably sleepy or yeah. he just won't pay attention or he remembers it incorrectly. But, I mean, out of all of these stories, some have to have some shred of truth to them. And it's even been so much as like one person was saying that 
he this that his parents recalled being younger, going out on a date, and that they came home and you were supposed to take a right, mm-hmm. but the turn was to the left, and somehow or another it came that they just. He was like, no, I'm not. That's not right. And he turned the opposite way. And like before they knew it, they were back on the right path. It's almost like something wanted to steer them off of a cliff. Yeah, yeah. Almost like perhaps our intelligence is being tested by the designers or something. Or or again, it could just very well be that it's a system glitch. You know, a little quick glitch in the matrix where it's like you're supposed to turn left. it, It flips right for a little bit until it's found and corrected by the system or the system administrator. Honestly, man, I, I think if we are living in a simulation, I think probably the, the master controller would be our friend Julius, who, uh, you know, longtime listeners will know. Uh, Is that right? So you think Julius was the last human on Earth and he created the simulation just to have people around and feel normal and that he so, knows yeah. that he did it? We're all just just little aspects of his subconscious or something. That is that used to be another uh, thought of existence was that we are just a figment of someone's imagination. Yeah. It could uh, all, all very interesting ideas. Well, and here's something else to think about. All right, so these simulations, like on Ultimate Warrior and simulations that are run, they're all done fast. Yeah. You know, they run hundreds of simulations in a very short amount of time. Well, think about that. If there is a programmer outside of our reality, what does God say in, like, the Bible? Like, you know, days are, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I haven't been to church in a while. I haven't read the right. Bible in a while. But, I mean, I know the gist of it is basically, like, a day to me is like a 100 years to you. You know, a minute to you is an eternity for me. Yeah. That could easily explain the time difference. Like, yeah, if you were to yeah. somehow get out of the simulation or interact with the ones or the one that's in charge of it, there you go. I mean, who's not to say that someone didn't just have a God complex in the future and create this entire reality just to be God? Yeah. I mean, like in you don't watch Black Mirror, do you? you haven't. Well, you haven't watched a lot of it. No, I've seen some. Though. Well, I mean, like in that episode, have you seen that the Star Trek inspired episode? No, I haven't seen that. Like it's a, you know, of course, there's a lot of uh, Black Mirror. It's in like the near future, but like in this future, they create these. Uh, it's like a video game company, and it's actually got. One of the women that I find to be one of the most attractive women in the world, um, and I don't know her name, I apologize, but she was the actress that was the mother in How I Met Your Mother, mm-hmm. Christina Malotti. Malotti. Mm-hmm. She's got a new show with Andy Sandberg. I just, I think she's just beautiful, but she's in it too. And what it is is in this, and again, spoilers, but you know, I won't spoil how it ends or anything. But the premise of the episode is that. Uh, you know, they all work for this like video game company or whatever. And it's like VR and it's so advanced. They can take like a sample of your DNA and create an artificial you inside. Oh shit! Uh, so what he's got, he's like this renowned everybody. I mean, he's, you know, people give him a hard time. He's kind of a douche and nerd and real, well, he's not douchey in real life, but in real life he's kind of picked on and laughed at. But I mean, he's very well known for creating these games. And like what it is, is the unbeknownst to everyone around him, what he's done is created this virtual simulation that he goes into, and it's this whole Star Trek like world. He's the captain of a ship, and all he has to do to put you in the simulation, I mean, you are this conscious being. You have all of your memories up to the point where he takes you. So, like, for instance, if you drink a cup of coffee and you, uh, you know, up to the moment that you took that last sip and you threw it in the trash can, your AI has all of your memories. So what he does, like for Christina's characters, he takes a cup of coffee of hers out the trash, gets a DNA sample, and bam, she's in his simulation. And it's like the real world, you still out there doing your thing, but uh-huh. here is an artificial version of you, like fully conscious and questioning yeah. the nature of your reality and all of that. Um, and it's actually got Homeboy from Westworld in it that played uh, the young man in black. Oh, that's um, cool, man. He's in it. I'll have to check that one out for sure. Each episode's got like different select. That's what I love about each episode. You're like, oh, that's so and so from so and so. Yeah. Um, but oh, you'd love this episode. But like, basically, what it is is he's a dick in the simulation. He's a ruthless captain. He's given himself like ultimate power in this. Yeah. Like, if you were to defy him, he could just snap his fingers and your mouth is gone. I don't like when you talk back. Let's change that. And bam, your mouth is gone until he wants to give it back. Um, he just is the master of this whole simulation. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, who's not to say our reality and what we know or what religions know is God is not just the creator of this. I mean, you know, while that sounds so complicated in the future world, such as one painted by West, I mean, uh, Black Mirror, in their world, it's nothing to it. Like, this is all simple technology. Yeah, man. And he's created this whole universe with planets and a ship. And I mean, who's not to say someone didn't have a God complex and maybe they're just some average Joe programmer out there who's sick of their life. And, you know, they've created this world to which we're all just... And I mean, that could explain things like werewolves. Ha, I'm going right. to program in some werewolves in to kill these people. And then I'm going to take them out. And no one's going to believe them. I'm going to, you know, and maybe they're just enjoying like kind of like Sims, the video game. Uh-huh. Sometimes you create chaos. I don't know if you ever played that. But I never played it. No. You just, you know, you build lives for these artificial people and you you are essentially God. You could ruin their life. You can huh. make it better. It's not to say we're just not Sims. Like, I mean, you know, a lot of. A lot of uh, games and movies, you know, they love to hide Easter eggs and self-references and stuff. I mean, who's not to say we play The Sims, but who's not to say that we're not like Sims 44? And as a chuckle, it's like you can actually play Sims in The Sims. Yeah, man, it's a it's a real head scratcher. It's a, it's a deep rabbit hole to go down. If God was just a programmer, what would you ask him? Like, let's just say you could talk to him. What would you say to him? What would you ask him? Man, I, I don't know. I, I just have a list of, all right, change this, this, and this in my uh, reality. And we'll, we'll Can you make my pecker just a little yeah. bit longer? Yeah. My God. <laughs> my you. God. I don't know why Hank Hill's asking it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, who's who's not to say that's not what it is? And that explains encounters with God and, and God having all of this omnipotent power and mm-hmm. being able to be, you know, the God that he is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know maybe he just reached out maybe maybe he was like i don't know what kind of god i want to be so for this group of people i'm going to be this kind of vengeful wrathful god and then for these people i'm going to be loving and forgiving i mean what if jesus was the programmer hey man who's to say We're think to about it man think about it because it gets really confusing when you talk like when people you know are telling me that like you know and i mean again i'm not disparaging anything i'm just asking but like you know they they go, God is Jesus in human form. Jesus is God in human form, and God is Jesus. Mm-hmm. And God, Jesus, the Son, the Holy Ghost, God, you know, whatever. And it's like right. they're all one and the same. And I'm like, but then the Bible talks about Jesus in a garden, like right before he was going to get crucified, like coming up on the day. Like, do I really have to do this? Like, I, you know, and remember, Satan even tempted Jesus and was mm-hmm. like, hey, you know, if you come yeah, over to the man. dark side, we got cookies and you don't have to be put up on a cross for that. And. So why? So he was praying to himself. What? What if Jesus was the programmer? And it's kind of like how they say Jesus was God on Earth, and like he put himself into the simulation just to to change it around. Yeah, I, I, I created all this AI. They're smart. They're conscious. They whatever. And now I was a vengeful, wrathful God. But now we're out in the real world. Life's gotten better, and I'm, I'm tired of. I don't want to take it out on them anymore. So. Uh, I'm going to go into the simulation and change things around. Hey, man, that, that, that could be what happens. What if humans haven't even been created yet? Follow me here. We'll end with this, and we can definitely continue on another podcast because I could go on and on about simulation theory. But what if humans don't even exist yet? What if we're just a simulation to see how humans would evolve? Like, what if there's some extraterrestrial or, or just, you know, other being that's thinking about creating us you know they they've got the dna you know maybe primates are real i don't know but they're like hey what would happen if we mixed our dna with these primates let's run a simulation to see and we're just part of the simulation and right now what they're seeing they're probably like yeah we're yeah. just not gonna yeah, let's scrap it. this uh, back to the drawing board yeah so because thousands of years and they're still killing each other yeah. over the dumbest shit yep but uh, let us know. We would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, we don't have as much time today uh, as, as we normally do, but we'll definitely, if this if this generates some interest, you know, if you guys are, are really into this, then we'll definitely, I mean, we can do a part two next week and just pick up yeah. the conversation and keep it going. But uh, let us know. Simulation. Is it B- simulation theory? Is it BS? Think there's some truth to it? If so, what type of simulation do you think that we're in? Why do you think that we are in a simulation? Um Leave us your thoughts. We'd love to know. In the meantime, we'll catch you patrons. We'll catch you tomorrow for the Patreon podcast. Everyone else, we'll see you again on Monday.
I'm Justin. I'm JP. Stay weird.